G'day mate, welcome to Oxnard included with me, JD. Now today we're going to cover up some advanced ranching techniques for Drekos. So Drekos are a fairly unique creature. They're happy to wander all over your base, including on the ceilings, without giving much of a damn what you think about it. Um, and they come in two different variants. Variants. They have a Dreko and a Glossy Dreko. Now Drekos consume um, pitch pepper, barn lily or mealwood. So they can be quite dangerous if you let them into your farms and they excrete phosphorite. Now phosphorite is a fairly useless material, but the main thing they actually, um, uh, the main thing that Drekos are good for is reed fiber by shearing them in the shearing station. So a standard Drekko will give you a reed fiber. A glossy Drekko, on the other hand, you can get by feeding your normal Drekko's mealwood. And they'll also output this phosphorite, which again, still is useless. But when you shear them, they can output plastic. Now, plastic can be very, very helpful on some of these maps that don't have a lot of oil on them. So this is something that you may want to consider. Um, as we can see from the na navigation, these guys are happy to wander absolutely anywhere. The only thing that will really block them is water more than two tiles deep or a good old pneumatic door if i throw one of these up we can see the glossy dreco stuck that side the normal dreco stuck that side now as for actually ranching these guys this is my preferred method of ranching them um it's either whether i want to domesticate them so whether i want to um actually ranch them with a grooming station or I want to leave them wild. You have a couple of different choices. So the scales themselves, the most important thing about them only actually grow when they're, they're in a hydrogen atmosphere. So I set up my ranches like this with one with a water lock to keep the hydrogen and the chlorine I'm actually using for their uh, food out of the rest of my base. At the same time, I also put in Atmos suits as soon as I have them available. So my rancher can actually come in here and wait for the Drekos, as you can see, which are not terribly fast to crawl all the way the, over the map onto the grooming station. Now, Drekos do prefer a fairly warm temperature. So that's something you need to keep into consideration. And as for their three different food types, if you want to go check my um, my video, which I'll link up the top right hand corner, that link the the different types of plants we can grow. Um, the only three options we have is pinch of pepper, balm lily, and mealwood. Now, pinch of pepper and balm lily um, both require both require a lot of uh, duplicate labor, and they're also a little bit hard to grow and cost a lot of resources. Whereas my balm lily costs nothing. Balm lily is literally throw it in the ground, make sure it is in a chlorine atmosphere. Even if it's domesticated, that's still perfectly fine. And as you can see, I've set up my ranch um, as so. If we go to the room overlay, this is 96 tiles, which is enough to support eight Drekos total in the room. And I've literally just put in farm tiles down the bottom, um, a space heater in the middle because my uh, balm lilies do require a warmer temperature. Um, the space heater, I haven't ho hooked up any sort of automation because it will automatically cut off at 85 degrees. So it's going to keep heating this room until it gets up to 85 degrees, which is more than perfect for the Drekos themselves. They're more than happy at that temperature. Um, and it's also a perfectly adequate temperature for the balm lilies. You can hook up automation. It is just as simple as putting in a little bit of wire, putting in a thermo sensor and say, hey, you, if you're below, say, 60 degrees, 60 degrees is perfectly fine, turn the um, space heater off. Uh, it's very, very easy to do. Space heaters don't require a lot of power. Um, it's 120 watts, which sounds like a lot, but honestly, compared to everything else you've got running in your base, it really, really isn't that much. Um, you do require a shearing station, which I'm actually using here, to shear my Dreco's uh, scales. Now, I actually have this guy up in chlorine at the moment, and you can see he's growing 13% per cycle. So, irrespective of what I'm, you know, what I'm uh, feeding them, they always uh, grow their scales at 13% per cycle because they are domesticated. Uh, at the same time, I've got the grooming station and I've got a good old auto sweeper. Now, the auto sweeper doesn't cover the whole room because really all I care about is um, the reed fiber that we're going to shear, shear off right in this area. Um, I've also set up an auto sweeper. I'll just tick this on for all. So it will ship out all the phosphorite, anything else that I happen to have in this room, in this area from construction. And more importantly, it's going to ship out all the reed fiber that we're going to shear off, shear off our Drekos. The second option I actually have is this is a wild room. Um, oh, that was not one thing I had to cover. 
Because you're actually going to heat this room, I strongly recommend you cover the, the outside of the whole room in insulated tiles. Um, as you can see, I've got farm tiles down here, which are not made out of insulation. And you can see I'm bleeding a lot of heat out the bottom corner of this room. This one down here, the heat's all contained by those insulated tiles. So it's something very, very important. Make sure you put down some insulated tiles here. Also, make sure you cover the insulated tiles underneath the space heater because... The way oxygen occluded works, because I'm actually heating up this phosphorite that the Dracos have excreted on this tile, it's transferring that heat into these insulated tiles, which means these two tiles will warm up over time. Um, maybe not in 10 cycles, maybe not in 50 cycles, but over 100 cycles or more, they will really, really heat up. So make sure you put a second row of insulation just underneath, just to keep that heat contained inside the room. Now, this particular room, I have 64 Drekos in. They are all completely wild. But because they're wild, they're limited to the same amount of food as my previous Drekos. Um, that is, what's that? Uh, 16. No, 18. Because um, I've got a little bit of extra room. So 18 Barnley uh, plants, which again, they cost me nothing to grow. Once I plant them, they just run indefinitely. Um, I've even... Uh, I even disable auto harvest. So... My duplicates don't harvest. It's all for the Drekos to consume. Uh, and I've got a shearing station run up here. Now, a duplicate will pretty much be in here nonstop when you have 64 uh, or 60 plus Drekos being uh, sheared all the time. As you can see, there's already, if the Drekos would get out of the way, there's already a bunch of reed fiber on the bottom. Now, because we're overcrowded and we're glum, so we're not actually being, treat, uh, being taken care of, uh, where is one with a ball bum? Scale growth. There we go. Um, they only grow the scales at 3% per cycle. So it's a lot lower per cycle, but I've off put that by just having more sheer numbers of Drekos in the room. Um, as I said, this will keep the duplicates busy for a long time, making a lot of reed fiber, which we can then use um, in and around the base. At the same time, I can have an autosave, turn on that conveyor loader, and we can ship out all that reed fiber out into our automated shipping system to ship it to somewhere where the duplicates can find better access to it. Because I'd really prefer that the duplicates, only the duplicate that's in here shearing actually uses the Atmos suit dock. I only need one duplicate in here at any one time. Our third option, if I stop breaking the machinery, um, is a glossy Drekko. Now, glossy Drekko's Glossy Drekos require mealwood or bl bristle blossom. So bristle blossom requires, um, when domesticated, you're not going to tell me. There we go. When domesticated, they require 20 kilos worth of water per cycle, whereas mealwood requires just dirt. Dirt's a lot easier uh, and a lot more plentiful in your base. You could use uh, mealwood, uh, bristle blossom. It's entirely up to you. I chose to use mealwood. I often do if I bother with a glossy Drekko uh, base. Honestly, I don't. Uh, this is set wrong. Glossy Drekko. Uh, again, we have a room size of, of 96 tiles. You do need to have a room to put down a shearing station, um, and it has to be qualified as a stable. Uh, and otherwise, unfortunately, I double the size of this room and have lots and lots and lots more Drekkos. Now, as we covered before, they do need to be in hydrogen to have those scales grow. So I've got my mealwood down here, which unfortunately does not grow in, in hydrogen, neither does the bristle blossom. So I've actually filled this whole bottom area with carbon dioxide. Um, and I've filled the whole top area with hydrogen, hoping that the Drekos will actually come up here and they will grow their scales. Now they do grow, uh, the glossy Drekos do grow their scales a lot faster. So that is something you need to take into consideration. Um, they will actually grow, what's that? 33% uh, per cycle once they're domesticated. Um, or you can leave them wild at just 8% per cycle, which does mean you could actually dump a lot more Draco, uh, glossy Drekos into the room. Um, it's, it's you know, either or. Uh, oh, one other thing with a space heater in the room, you do need to make sure that these machines are made out of um, something that has a slightly higher overheat temperature. Uh, auto sweepers come with a overheat temperature of 75 degrees. If we make them out of gold, it brings it up to 125 degrees. Same with the shearing station. Um, if you make it out of ign igneous rock, it brings the overheat temperature up to 90 degrees. So that will stop these machines overheating eventually. Well, overheating eventually if you leave them long enough. Um, so yeah, something else to keep in mind. So glossy Drekos can be done. A room like this with eight Drekos in it, is pretty much going to give you one ton of plastic every 10 cycles or 100 kilos of plastic every every cycle. It's not a lot. Um, honestly, I would probably do this with just 
lots and lots and lots of glossy geckos in a room, um, providing you can breed enough of them um, to get the room up and running. At the same time, make sure you are shipping out the eggs. Unfortunately, with the way this room is designed, I can't get the auto sweeper to reach the whole room. Um, same with this one, I can't get the auto sweeper to reach the whole room. So one of the things I often do is I often put down some incubators out in the wild and I'll actually have these guys set to, uh, I don't have any Draco eggs. So I'll set these, as many of these as I need to Draco and glossy Draco eggs to force the duplicates to come in here, grab any wild eggs and, sh and bring them out of the room. So I don't overpopulate the room. Um, can we untrust you? No. Um, but yeah, same story. 96 tiles in size means that I, I have to keep my uh, my Drekos to my glossy Drekos down to eight to remove that overcrowding buff. Or you can go all out, keep them wild, overcrowd them as much as you want, and just shear them all the time. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it uh, helpful. As always, if you did, click the like button. If you want to see more quick tutorial videos like this on different creatures, um, by all means, click the subscribe button. We are going to be covering probably puffs uh, in the next video, maybe slicksters. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.